My name is Tran and I am an intern for API Equality LA, which is a nonprofit organization um, created back in 2005 and it's a coalition of organizations and we fight for LGBT rights, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender rights within the Asian Pacific Islander community. I am a student at Cal State University in Northridge studying Asian American Studies. My name is Cynthia Wang. I am a second year PhD student in Annenberg School for Communication. So I'm a poor starring grad student. I'm Chinese. Um, I was born in Taiwan and my parents are from Taiwan. I was actually born there as well. I realized I was not quite straight probably sometime in sixth grade. Although, that was, that was kind of weird. I had a best friend in sixth grade and uh, I, uh, we were going up to the, the field for you know PE or something and uh, she stuck out her hand and I grabbed it and then she like shook it off and I was just like, what are you, gay? And at the time I had no idea what the word meant. I realized that I was gay when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, I felt like, you, you know, the idea of being gay doesn't just come up all of a sudden. You have these, when you grow up, gender is defined and created by society. And being in high school, you want to feel normal. So you follow those normalized gender roles in being that in beginning of my sophomore year, I had a boyfriend all the way to my senior year. And I knew at the time that I wasn't fully committed or I couldn't be fully committed, but I forced myself in that relationship because I wanted to be normal. And through that struggle, through that process, I realized I was gay. Uh, I realized I was attracted to women probably, um, Maybe my senior year of high school is when I actually really recognized it. Um, I had, uh, before then, you know, in fourth grade, I had probably my first girl crush on this girl, Rachel. Um, she's like this blonde, really pretty girl with pretty hair. Um, and uh, probably looked at her a little bit more than I should. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that was probably my first girl crush. Um, I think I had a crush on one of my friends in middle school as well. And, uh, but it wasn't until my senior year of high school when, um, I had a crush on this other girl and it was, um, for the first time actually identifiably sexual. And it really threw me for, for a loop. So this is a picture of my family. This is like back in 99. This is my little sister, Judy. This is me. And my parents obviously thought it was cute to all have the same haircut or the bowl haircut. This is very typical to have um, in a Buddhist family. Uh, this is called an altar, uh, a Buddhist altar. So there are different, um, uh, I don't know the names. like goddesses and gods, I guess, um, and people that we worship in Buddhism. And there's ver there's so many variations and so many denominations of um, Buddhism. But the, the Buddhism that we practice is Chinese Vietnamese Buddhism. Um, I don't know the name of it. That's a good question. Why did I feel compelled to come out? Because I felt that there was something uh, like not normal about it and by coming out and by I think by taking on the identity it's empowering it gives you a community it makes your life make sense in your head you know um, so I think for those reasons I first came out to myself because for the first like what 25 years of my life I had these feelings that I couldn't really explain and um, and to put like a name to it and to sort of accept it I think really helped make sense of how I felt. So now coming out to my parents, honestly, like especially the second time that happened, 
by accident. So that was not, I, I, I was never actually compelled to come out to my parents. Um, both time that it happened, it sort of just came out. There, there was no planning. There was no, none of that. <laughs> if my parents found out, if my mother specifically found out, she would probably have a heart attack. And I'm not even kidding. Uh, <laughs> she does have high blood pressure. Um, or a stroke or something or uh, yeah she I don't think emotionally would be able to handle it um, and then whatever happens to her health wise or whatever she ends up doing to herself uh, I would probably have on my conscious for the rest of my life um, my dad surprisingly even though he's you know the one that's really involved in the church <sighs> I feel like he, of course, would be really disappointed at first, but I think over time he might come to be a little more okay with it. I think, I think especially being bisexual, it's even harder because to them, that is a choice, right? I can choose a man, I can choose a woman. Why wouldn't you choose the man when you like men anyway? I mean, I, I feel like if you were a lesbian, then it's like, well, it's clear. Okay, you don't like men. You don't see it as an option. So my parents, the way my parents found out I was gay was very, it's not the conventional way of, I didn't formally come out to them. Um, I was in a car with my girlfriend, gave her a kiss goodnight. And then I walked in the house. My mom gave me a dead glare. And she's just like, come in my room, come in the room. And, talked to me and I realized at the moment in the back of my head I knew she knew something but I didn't know she saw me so she questioned me and she asked me the first thing she asked me was do you have something to tell me and I said no of course not I don't have anything to tell you like what am I hiding so this conversation lasted a good hour she kept pushing it and pushing it. at the end of it she finally asked me do you like girls and after she said do you like girls she said you think sleeping with girls is normal? And at that moment, I knew whatever was going on through my mom's head was the idea of being with a girl, she only sees it relating to anything sexual, or that's one of it. And the second thing, she only related being gay as anything related to AIDS. So um, at the moment, back in my uh, freshman year of college, I was very irrational at the time, and I said, yeah, mom, I am gay, so what? And at that moment, she started crying. I realized how much it hurt her. So I sucked up my pride, and I went back into the closet. And it was a process for me. The whole process um, was a good six months of going in and out and in and out of it. I kept trying to convince my mom I wasn't gay so that she would not cry and not be hurt. So after November, when I just came out to them completely, um, we didn't really talk about it for months. And it, it would come up in conversation like every now and then. So um, I remember this one last argument I had with my mom a couple weeks ago. <laughs> And she was really sad, she was really down, and then all of a sudden she brought up <clears throat> the fact that I was gay and how much it was hurting her. And she just kept asking me, why can't you be normal? Why can't you be normal? So I told her, I can't be nor I can't be what you want me to be, but I am normal. I kept repeating it, I am normal, I am normal. And at the end, I got so mad and so frustrated and so angry. And I was trying to hold back my tears and I, and I told her, um, I love Terrence. I told her that. And um, this is the first time I've ever told my mom that I've ever loved anyone. And I've had a lot of partners in the past, but I've never told my mom that. So that really changed the course of, I think, the conversation. It was kind of a turning point for her to realize that um, what we were doing was really serious. Um, shortly after um, was when Terrence and I participated in the Lunar... Um, New Year Parade in Chinatown where we um, were acting like the brides 
for um, Asian American brides um, to walk in front of our parade. And I can show you guys some pictures later. Um, and then when I actually walked in that parade, even though I didn't tell my parents, Terrence's family was out there to support us. Um, they were standing on the sideline and they even joined us at the banquet to celebrate after. So it was a really great, really nice experience, um, even if my parents weren't there. Um, so I feel, I feel like that's it for my, my coming out. I mean, we haven't talked about it since, besides that last argument that we had. Um, that was a couple weeks ago. But ever since that argument, I've started putting up pictures of Terrence and I in the room to remind my mom that um, Terrence is my partner. And um, I try to not refer to her as my friend when I'm talking to my mom anymore. So um, it, it's, been, it's been a bumpy ride. It's still an ongoing process. I came out to my parents twice. Uh, the first time was about four years ago. I was seeing, sort of seeing this girl up in San Francisco and uh, my dad was working up north at the time and uh, my mom and my brother and me decided to go up to uh, visit him and to celebrate my uh, grandfather's 80th birthday and my grandfather also lived up there. So I tried to fit seeing this girl in with all of our family festivities. So that was the first time. Then I entered, I got into a relationship with, uh, with a very serious relationship with a man for um, about a year and a half. And I think uh, my parents were really happy. So like, you know, I always tell people sort of tongue in cheek, if you're a girl and you want your parents to accept any guy you may bring home, just tell them you're interested in girls. Um, but, uh, and you know, like, I think when I, during the relationship, my parents probably thought I was cured, um, which made things even more difficult because they don't really understand the concept of uh, not being straight, you know, or of, of, of not being heteronormative. Um, so I had to come out to them again after that was all done uh, because my, uh, my current girlfriend uh, gave me a hickey on my neck. And my mom saw, and I had to explain that. Uh, and the conversation, again, sort of went something like, uh, Ooh, what's that mark on your neck? It's really bad. It's bruised, said my mom. And I said, oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, like, it'll go away in a few days. And she's like, but, like, are you... So she was really confused. And she started questioning me about the people that I hang out with here in LA, because I just moved here at the time. She's like, do you, are you making new friends that you don't think I would approve of? And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, when I first moved to LA, I had joined um, an API LGBT group. And I was thinking, well, she may not exactly approve that I'm, you know, marching with the Asians, but uh, I was like, well, you know, all the people in the group, they're like, they're upstanding citizens, they're intelligent, they're, nice people. No, no, she'd be fine with them, other than the fact that they're gay. Uh, she'd be fine with them. So I'm like, no, no, you'll like, you'd like all my, all my new friends. And she's like, are you getting into fights with them or something? And I think as soon as she said that, it clicked in my head. I was like, oh my gosh, my mom must think that I'm in a gang, right? That I'm getting into like a lot of trouble. I was like, no, mom, no, that's not the case. And so, you know, like we hem and hawed for a little bit for a few more minutes until finally my mom just right out said, do you have a girlfriend? And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, how did she know? Um, but I guess moms, moms always sort of know. And so I was, said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And then she says, did she hit you? And I was like, no. And so not only did I had to come out to her, I also had to try to explain what a hickey was. Especially 
have this whole thing of, I mean, there's a freaking movie called Saving Face, right? I mean, it, it, image for, for, um, for Asians and, and, and honoring your family is really important. And so, you know, to be abnormal would be like to shame your family and that it's a reflection on the parents. So I'm sure that if I came out to my parents, you know, one of the things that they would think is, well, what did we do wrong, right? Um, not just what's wrong with you, but what did we do wrong that you would turn out this way? Well, first of all, it's a stigma to identify as anything LGBTQ, not only in you know, the broad American um, straight community, but specifically also um, the immigrant API community. Um, the whole ideology of model minority coming to America, making kind of a life for yourself over here they were forced to assimilate in a, in, and in assimilation, um, they tried to be normal. They tried to fit what was normal in the American society. And in the Asian community or Asian American community, if you do not fall within the boundaries of what society considers normal, then you're an outcast and that's not seen highly upon. I think that the Asian culture just traditionally stresses, um, God, this sounds so communist, but like harmony and not really going against the flow. Um, I feel like I'm reinforcing some really awful Asian stereotypes right now, but um, there, I think there is a very strong uh, feeling of filial piety, of doing what your parents tell you to, um, because they know what's best for you. Um, I, you know, again, I'm not any other race other than Asian. I haven't had any other upbringing other than Asian, so I can't speak for other other races. But um, I think that, and I've, I've, I love my parents so much, and. Um, I have a really good relationship with them. Um, so a lot of my thinking is how will it affect them, right? And I hope that that's part of the filial piety thing. But filial piety is a huge thing in, in Asian cultures. And I think even if, even if we don't explicitly say that there's filial piety or there's we want to do things for our parents, I feel like we're sort of conditioned to just culturally or whatever, we are conditioned to really think about what our parents think. And not just our parents, but what our extended family thinks, what our parents' friends think, um, because word travels. And word travels, people gossip, and uh, if people gossip enough about the bad things, your parents can lose face. And if you're a good daughter, or a good son, or a good child, you don't want that to happen. You know, in a perfect world, I would be totally out and open and out and proud and just, you know, be who I am. And if you don't like it, then too bad, you know. Um, so I, I'm like that with, with um, most new people that I meet, unless it was work-related. So um, with new people that I meet, new friends and that sort of thing, like, I'm, I'm relatively open. I mean... I'm not gonna, that's not gonna be one of the first things I say, hi, you know, <laughs> by the way, I'm bi. But, you know, if it happens to come up, you know, then like, yeah, you know, they can know that I have a girlfriend and whatever. And if they don't like it, then you don't need to be my friend, so whatever. The first time it happened, I think my, my mom really tried to, they both tried to really keep quiet. They, you know, in terms of contentiousness, it was not very contentious, which I'm very, very grateful for. This time, um, because, um, because my girlfriend, my fiance, uh, she's obviously somebody who is very, very important in my life. I think that they're, they're conflicted. They want to see me happy. They can see that she makes me happy. Um, but I think they're still struggling with this idea of, well, Cynthia's not going to have this normal life. She's not going to 
have like like I feel like in their heads especially as all my friends are getting married and they're getting married to like their partners spouses are really good matches and um there's like that what is it um like they're very beautiful couples because they're very heteronormative um you know the husband is like a neurosurgeon and the wife is like you know a business executive and they're all very good matches and i think my parents hope for something like that for me um, and I think that they're just struggling with the realization that that may not um, actually happen, that I will never have that big, beautiful wedding where they can invite all of their friends. One, one thing, when I, when I first came out two years ago um, to my parents, this is when it was kind of iffy, was I was being very selfish. Um, not to say that I'm not selfish now, but I was being very selfish because I believed what I was going through was just my problem and my issue. And I thought that it would not hurt, it would not hurt my parents at all. So I expected them to accept who I was. So for the two years after, um, I held a lot of anger and a lot of grudge against them for not um, accepting me the first time I came out. But over time I realized that when you come out, your parents are coming out too, in their own way. They're coming out to the idea of you identi identifying as LGBTQ. They're coming out to the public that their son or daughter is gay. And they're coming out to their own family members, not just for you, but for them too, to kind of bear the shame of having a son or daughter that is gay. So for me now, I do understand that it is hard for my parents, but I have to continue pushing them. I don't expect them to accept me all at once. That's why I'm so adamant about it now. I have to keep pushing slowly and slowly and slowly, but I have more respect and I have, and I'm more sensitive to their issues. <clears throat> so when we do have arguments, I don't expect my mom to accept me, but I do tell her and I say, well, mom, you can believe what you want to believe, but just know that at the end of the day, the person, <clears throat> the person I love is different from the person you imagine me to fall in love with. So that's the approach that I take it from right now, is to be more respectful of their opinion before I wasn't, before I was being a little rash.